Uh, today we're talking about favorite shows on our own stations as well as favorite long-standing shows on Audioport, or maybe if you've come across something new. Um, I always talk, well, I, I'm always wishing that at KHOI, one, one of my favorite shows is called um, Donna Lana Kitchen, and I think we've mentioned this before, but it's, it's, it's very, very, very Midwestern. Like, it's so adorable. Um, these two ladies, and they're, they're very knowledgeable, and they know everything about recipes to, not just recipes, but exploring different foods, and also about, you know, environmental, the environmental aspect of growing food, and being conscious about, you know, environment and everything, and, um, I, and, and it's kind of like the, if, if, Car Talk was a recipe show, and they just have, they just click together, and, and they just make little noises when they get excited about something, oh, oh, yes, oh, I do love that, and so, um, so I hope they go on forever, um, mm. and then we have, my other favorite right now is uh, Bob's Super Garage 8-Track, Garage 8-Track Collection, and mm. I love it because it's wonderfully community radio where he you can hear him be really passionate about whatever artist he's talking about right he knows he talks about who wrote the song and where they got the idea and how they collaborated all the you know background information and then right before he plays it there's always this little click because he's playing it on his own player right. to the microphone right right i was going to ask that yeah. <laughs> and then he clicks it off and then he'll do it and it, some songs are only like a minute long and Mm -hmm. um, I love that one too. So those are my local ones. So uh, let's start with that with that um, topic. Like, what are some local shows that you guys have on your station, elite to your station that you really like? Could you say what those shows were again that you just mentioned? Um, KHOI uh, shows uh, Don Alana Kitchen and. They are unfortunately not on Audioport, but they are planning to be on our podcast uh, website. So there will be a link there when that gets up and going. And the other one is uh, Bob's 8-Track Garage. 8-Track, yes. I've seen yeah. that one. Have you? Uh, on Audioport? I, I don't think like that, that one's on audio port either, actually. <laughs> okay. But um, this rings a bell. But yeah, you can find it on the website, of course, on the KHOI. Okay. Mm -hmm. That that brings up another, you know, what you're saying because some of my favorite shows on WXOX are not on audio port either, and I'm always like trying to get them to do it, and it just some of them have. I mean, we've gotten some more shows up recently, and you guys have been a great help. So thank you, Stephanie and Ursula oh, yeah. and Otis. Of course. Um, they've all been really thankful for your support. And once they do it, they find that it's very easy. But it's like pushing them over that ledge and getting them to do it. I'm, I, I don't know if anyone has any tips for that. Um, yeah, that maybe can... that's just it, right? Like it just seems intimidating. Yeah. When it's really maybe. not a huge, it's just doing it once together. Yeah, well, yeah that's what we find. Uh, yeah, we usually, the best way is to do it over the phone with someone um, and walk them step by steps. And then once they, do that and but yeah yeah some cool. people just like eh, nah. <laughs> I know <laughs> I don't want to be national I'm... well I'll tell you guys about a couple of shows we have on Art FM that I love that are on Audioport um, one is called Inside a Question um, some of you might have met Derek Wood at, he came to the Portland GRC um, but his show is really interesting and uh, every week he takes a question and opens it up basically and digs into it and really just um, gets into the nuances of things. It's very, you know, thinking, you know, people radio and you get like, I always try to vacuum on Sunday afternoons and then that show comes on and I like have to stop and listen ah, to it. That's really cool. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's really good to stop vacuuming and listen to radio. I love it. <laughs> 
do that. So anyway, <laughs> my house is suffering as a result, but, but it's a great show. Um, and it's just really, I don't know, it just really engages you. It even has things for the listeners to do at home. Like sometimes you might be doing science experiments, you know, like, you know, oh, speaking of spoon on your nose and seeing how long you can hold it there or something like that. So anyway, that one's really great. Nice. Um, like he's the title too. Yeah, he's got a couple shows on Audioport, but I haven't gotten him to like regularly start doing that. So if you just need something to fill in, try that and then let me know if you like it and then I can tell him and then that might encourage him to do it some more. Nice. Um, um, so you said this one is or is not on Audioport? It, it has a few, ep- a, just a couple episodes up there. Okay. Maybe I could convince um, him to do a Sprouts show. Oh yeah, there you go. Please do, that would be awesome um because i think he wants to do more he just gets busy you know so if he had somebody that encouraging him kind of, yeah sure. me. <laughs> and then we have one um this one is interesting it's called 120 seconds or less and it's one hour of all songs that are under two minutes long <laughs> i was like i said to the dj you really like to torture yourself dude and make things <laughs> difficult um the interesting challenge it ends up being really interesting because there's just these short bits and they're all woven into each other and he comes in and talks over it kind of cinematic and it's really a whole kind of journey those shows are really great and he's got 12 episodes up there and and he, they're pretty evergreen so what's it called um, again that's called 120 seconds or less and then we've got a really great, if you just like uh, rock and roll, we've got a show called Rock Sexy, which is done by this uh, girl named Blythe. Blythe of the Ball, she's been with us forever. And um, she actually met, this is cute, I have to tell you, because we're coming up on our anniversary of our radio station, but she met her husband. I scheduled them next to each other, not knowing that they would end up falling in love and oh my having, gosh. having a little child. They had our first WXOX love baby. Oh. They got married at a roller skating rink um oh, wow. and they're about to have the second baby and i can't believe it because i haven't even met the first baby yet because of the pandemic so i haven't even met the first wxox baby and there's another one on the way so <laughs> but she still manages to do her rock and roll show every thursday night and she after she does her show she edits out all the local stuff and then puts it up on audio port hey michelle hey this is not related to work <laughs> okay oh <Uh-oh. laughs> Just mute there. Then we could have just got some personal information. <laughs> Good catch, Stephanie. Get everything on this call. Yeah. So those are a couple of the ones I'd brag about right away at our radio station. But that's really fun. I love that story that they they got married and you. So you have a, a automatic mascot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and the cutest baby I've ever seen ever Aww. too. So. So we're, yeah, we're doing good with that. <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. I'm going to check out that 122nd show for sure. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Yeah. Have you come across, oh no, we're still on this topic. Sorry. I'm going to stay organized. Um, uh, Joseph, what do you guys do that you really like? Oh, what do we do that we really like? Uh, well, there's not very many of us. Uh, we've got like two producers. Oh volunteers and so and they both play the same genre of music (laughs) (laughs) let's see that that's that's the sound of the radio station depends on whoever is volunteering so right now we're into oldies but goodies type of stuff and before Uh that we're into blues and before that we're into Oh, so you kind of have different phases of discovery yeah it it has changed over the years and Mm -hmm. being that i've been around forever yeah, I've I've watched and experienced these changes, and so this is what we're in. We're back into the, to the music that was brand new when I was in high school. You know, so. Right. <laughs> I still, you're, you're listening to this. I, I remember when they came out. I, I, w- I went to the, to, Winterland, or I went to the Cow Palace, and I seen these people. You know? <laughs> I, I remember when Jefferson Airplane first came on. The, I, we actually went to, I think it was a Beach Boy concert. And oh, and wow. they had Jefferson Airplane that was playing just before an intermission break. And people were getting up and walking out. They were going, getting their snacks or something. And, and I thought, well, wait a minute. These, these 
these people are different. They're, they're really good. And where are you going? <laughs> and then, then they begin the big thing. So, oh, yeah, wow, that's a good story. Yeah. Well, okay, enough of that. What else we have? Um, uh, well, what we have off of Audioport that, that I like, a Sonic Cafe, I, it, I, I like that because it puts in these, these sound bites of comedy routines. And oh, I remember okay. those comedy routines again when I was in high school or in early adult life. And I was like, oh, yeah, I, I remember that album. You know, nice. He just plays little snippets of that. So that, that's fun. I like that. Um, I love hearing comedy stuff on the radio, too. Yeah. I've been, yeah. I haven't for a long time. We used to have a station that did that. When, yeah, when I was in high school and I would hear, like, George Carlin stuff. And um, I haven't found a station that has done that since. Yeah, that comes out of... Some station Sonic in Washington Cafe? State, okay. Sonic Cafe. I feel like I've heard yeah. of that. Um, indigenous music with K. Uh, I like that one too. That's that's nice. Is that a that's an audio port show? Yeah, it's an audio port show. Yeah. Okay. The the other one, I I I just I was going on audio port and I start looking around and there was economic upbeat and I didn't know that was an audio port program. I remember mm -hmm. listening to this fellow. Um, Professor Wolf, forget his first name now. Uh, and I thought hey, every time I can find that, you know, I would listen to him because he has a really good e insight on economic U.S. economics, and he comes from really the far left side. And I thought, wow. And then I looked at, it and it's a weekly show. I go, cool. Mm. I'm going to see if I can get get our people to replace another one of our shows with that. I think that's good information. Nice. Um, and you know, were talking update? about uh, economic update. Okay. Um, Professor something Wolf, with two Fs. I can and see. we were talking earlier about the feedback from the community about maybe considering taking something off. We did a survey, as a handwritten survey, sometimes. And we, we put it out in different places, and the, then we got some back. And we, one of the questions was, what could we do to improve our radio sound? And several people says, get so-and-so off the air. <laughs> Ooh, that's harsh. <laughs> yeah. And it, 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 it was good because it was just driving us crazy. Cause she would get on the air, and she would do all of her announcements like this. And it was... <laughs> Oh, God, why did you do that? And her, she had a really great voice, but everything had to come out like this. Oh, man. So, <laughs> so look at the feedback we're getting. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Oh. Wow. So, so did you keep so did you, Yeah, did you do it? <laughs> yeah, she, she stopped doing that, and yeah, she went off to something else. And yeah, it was. It was did you uh, take it in stride? That's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> so now what, what, I, what we have on the air that I like, and I think what we're going to go on the air, and I, it's going to be fun, is we have a travel campaign coming up for primary elections. And th there's, I think there's three council seats up for office. And there are more than th at least three candidates or more on each uh, seat. So I'm thinking about, I've, I've done this before, I've, I've done tribal campaign forms and I get all the candidates together and we do this, okay, let's, what are you going to do, da, 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 da. I, oh man, I'm really tired of that, don't want to do that. So what I want to do is I'm going to have these forms and I'm going to send them a list of questions. Because the other thing I found out too is you don't send them a list of questions, they don't show up because they don't want to be there and, and get thrown a, a curveball. And because that's what I would start doing. And so they couldn't anticipate what I was going to ask. So I thought, okay, this is what I want to do just for this primary election. See, everybody sends out their campaign letters. I'm going to be doing this. Da, 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 da. I'm going to ask them, start out with one question. What's the quality of life in Hoopa? And how do you feel about that? What I want to find out is who are they as people? What are their values? What, what do they... Uh, uh, the second follow-up question is, 
If we don't talk about the quality of life, what is the worst possible thing that could happen? If we don't even consider it, what's the worst possible thing that could happen? Follow-up question to that, if we do talk about the quality of life and start having open discussions about it, what would be the best possible things that could come out of that? This is all part of my consensus building type of uh, repertoire. Uh, and uh, let's see what, uh, then I want to talk about environment. What are we going to do about, the, what's the footprint, what's the, what, what, what's the uh, uh, carbon footprint of Hoopa? What do you think it is? And what's contributing to that? And how can we address that? What, what ideas do you have that, that would address that? Um, one thing I do want to know is I know that the Tribal Council has recently, we have like 40 different departments, maybe more. And so what they did is they passed this thing where every Tribal Council member has to be a liaison from the council to a certain department. But all of the, most all of the other departments have a liaison assigned, except for KIDE and the tribal newspaper. Mm -hmm. So how come we don't have one? So how valuable is media to you? And what is it that you want our media to do for us? Another follow-up question. So then, I boil that down, just that's all I want to talk about. And it, then we have the runoff where the, we identify the two top candidates for each, each seat. And that's when I'll start talking about, I'll pull out all of their campaign letters and say, well, let's talk about this. And I, there's, since there'll only be six people, I can have an hour, maybe two hours with each one of them, just by themselves. Well, let's talk about what you're talking about. What did you identify as a problem? What did you had come these up with this great solution? Uh, let me give you some feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, and there would be no trick questions other than talking about what they're telling everybody else that why they're so great. That's, that sounds like a good approach. Yeah, I'm going to do it that way, I think. Since this is my, la <laughs> this is my <laughs> last year of doing this, uh, oh, maybe go I'll, for it. Yeah, I'll go <laughs> for it now, and then, I don't know, maybe the community will hire me to do it again uh, at some point. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll put up my shingle and say, here, I'm still in media, but I'm not affiliated with the Hoopa Valley Tribe. Maybe that will attract everybody. So it's, <laughs> Let's put it on the ballot to hire me to do these contracts. Every every year we have a tribal election, so let me <laughs> let me facilitate it. Oh, well, Joseph. Yeah. yeah. I got my fingers crossed for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You vote for me with your dollars. No ballot necessary. <laughs> Just directly send them directly to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that, that was a car talk thing, was it? Put it, put your question on the back of a twenty dollar bill and send it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, that was that was a lot of good information, Joseph. That'd be an awesome, interesting, you know, audio. I mean, Pacifica station managers discussion, just how to host a political roundtable or Ooh, something, like yeah. or questions, you know, interview questions. Those were good, Joseph. You started the first one. You ask them, what is the quality of life in Hoopa? And what was the second part of that question? Well, and how do you feel about that? And how because you, 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 can, you go anywhere with that. Yeah, and so, I like that. And I've asked people these questions, and they, they will always start out with, with a nice scenario. Oh, it's really great. You know, the environment is good, da, 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 da. And then they start thinking about it, just let them go, just let them go. And so, well, you know, these things are kind of bringing us down, da, da, and I really don't like that. And then, uh, and how do you feel about that? Wow, it really hurts me. I really like this other thing, but this stuff is really bad. And, and they just start rolling with that. The follow-up question is, well, what is the worst possible thing that could happen if we don't start talking about the quality of life in Hubon? And then right. follow that out with, what's the best possible thing that could happen if we do? And you go for the worst first, because what that does is it, has triggers the base of your your brain or or uh, all the negative things comes from and actually it has the closest uh the fastest synopsis triggers mm. that will get you moving you know, that's that's why when something falls and you go ah, 
<laughs> well, that's a that's an automatic reaction. You don't have to think, oh, geez, something's falling. And if it hits me, I'm going to. No, you don't think about it. You just do it. And so that is the basic instinct of people. So you want to get that. And it's always based on something dangerous or fearful or da -da or some negative negativities. So get that out of the way. And then you ask them, what's the best possible thing? To happen? Now, this all comes from your frontal lobe. And you start thinking, and you don't have to worry about fears. You're just thinking about, wow, what's the best possible thing that can happen? And all your ideas come pouring out, especially since you don't have to think about negativity. You, you already did that. So yeah, that would that's, be a good that's that catapult process. to an interview. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's wow. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really enjoy this. Yeah. He's I'm going to retire more often. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm curious, uh, Lakeisha, do you have a favorite flagship, sh uh, flagship show or more than one at your station? Oh, jeez. Uh, well, yeah, I guess we, but we play many, many different, um, we have different genres sure, uh, sure. of music, um, you know, over the weekends. And honestly, I, I, perhaps it just depends on the audience that, that we're speaking of, but um, for, for jazz, it's our morning jazz show. Um, surely if someone mentions jazz here at WNCU, it's going to be morning jazz with Alan Thompson. Um, so in regards to that platform or that format, it's definitely, definitely, um, our morning jazz show. What, what do you like um, about his way of doing the show? Well, um, I think he is. For one, he's young. I think Alan is about 26, 27. Um, he took the place of um, a gentleman that retired about five years ago now. And he um, came in initially. And I think that host really sold him to the audience. I mean, because he was here, whenever he was here training with him, it was like, you know, hey, I'm in here, you know, this young cat, you know, we're in here putting together this show. Um, it was just a really smooth transition since we knew that he was retiring. And so, I mean, I think the introduction to um, our morning audience mm. early on definitely really helped out. Um, and even people would call me and say, hey, you know, OK, he's you know, he's he's getting it together. We can tell that he's still learning, but they were willing to stay there and stick with him and if you listen to him today you probably could not tell that um you know he was struggling five years ago um especially when he didn't have the crutch of um the veteran host that that was the host of that show prior to him coming on board mm -hmm. um but i think people they like now the way that he mixes the music um the old um older like traditional jazz artists versus the new artists that's playing today um and even just the different yeah it's yeah it's 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 different it's it's a different listen but i think it's for the good because again you know we're trying to take this approach of um really representing really representing the community that we serve and durham is bursting at the seams when i tell you that we are we will soon be the mini silicon valley um, because we have all of those folks here now. Um, Apple is here. Google is here. Oh, wow. um, Amazon distribution and um, their corporate office being here in this area. It's and all of these oh, yeah. tech companies are moving here. What's the guy that owns? What is it? Fortnite? Um, I can't think of the parent company, but they're here um, just across the way in Cary, um, which is Cary, North Carolina, which is not too far from us. So it's this place is really, um, we don't have enough housing inventory for the folks that are moving here. Oh um, the market is the market is crazy here. I, yeah, my house has probably increased 150% in equity. Oh, um, 
Yeah, it's it's really crazy here. But people are having housing wars, bidding wars, yeah. whatever you want to call oh, it yeah, yeah, um, yeah. now. But that's just the growth that we're experiencing. And, you know, we're just trying to stay locked in there with it. And um, as people change and many folks, it is, you know, the younger younger demographic that's moving here, but they're starting families. So they really, really appreciate um, us being out in the community. We uh, kicked off our uh, Durham playlist. We partnered with the park, um, downtown Durham Park um, Center last year, and we kicked off a, a playlist series. And to see the level of diversity of, you know, oh my God, I, it was, I was like, this is it. This is what we want to represent. This is what our programming has to represent from the babies, the dogs, old, <laughs> young, black, white, green, purple, they were there. Um, nice. And that was exactly um, what our community looks like now. Professional, um, educated, um, all of that. They were there um, at those concerts um, last month. I think we hosted one um, each month from July to October and it was just amazing. And it was the first crack at that for us here at WNCU. Um, obviously with the pandemic and all that stuff going on, we were a little leery when we kicked it off in July, but I think folks were more open to outside concerts, you know, versus being sure. somewhere on the inside. Some folks were still masked up while we were outside and some, some were not, it was not a mandate um, that they, that they were, but many folks were, but people just kind of, at their lawn chairs and just came for a good time those Friday evenings. And um, so, yeah, I mean, and then tying all of that back to this morning jazz host, many of those folks, that's what, that's what I heard. You know, it's that guy, Alan Thompson that you. Oh, okay. Um, He's getting people excited. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Wow. sounds like, yeah, you guys are just exploding down there with business you know, and we're, we're trying to keep up. Yeah. We're trying to keep up and stay safe at the same time. That's awesome. Yeah, good for you for making it happen during the middle of the pandemic. No, <laughs> that too. <laughs> it's an outdoor event, for sure. Um, do you have any, I'll just quick, do you have any um, talk shows that you really like that you guys are doing? Talk shows? Uh, so we kicked off this show that we have continued. It was birthed out of the pandemic, um, COVID Conversations. Okay. Um, it is a smaller segment, more so I'm um, stepping away from our 30 minute or hour long public affairs shows that my news and public affairs director um, produces weekly. Um, we, we started with, you know, having it on YouTube and on our social media platforms. And now we have um, continued to produce it um, and it airs on Wednesday Wednesday evenings um, at 6.30. Um, nice. So that's something new and we're bringing in any, and like, I mean, of course, now we're talking about, you know, the, the pandemic from a standpoint of how people are recovering or perhaps maybe how people have not recovered. Um, we're getting personal stories from people in the community. Um, maybe they actually, um, you know, suffered with COVID um, and we've gotten some of those personal stories with people just sharing their testimony and what they went through. And many of them were just get vaccinated, you know, if you can. Um, and and in, I think uh, two of those guests, they, they were not vaccinated. And, um, you know, I don't know after going through that ordeal, their personal opinion was that, you know, they wish they had, you know, gotten it in advance. So maybe perhaps that pre-exposure um, would have perhaps maybe subsided some of the the, um, the um, side effects that they suffered from from COVID. Um, and then uh, the, the businesses, and obviously we're here at a university, so we have access to the nurses in our nursing department, um, our business school. Um, we have access to the professionals that are really crunching the numbers when you look at economic impact and economic recovery, the impact on the black and brown communities um, here um, that's in our listening area. Um, and right here in our home city, um, the Bull City as well, and really looking and crunching those numbers have been of huge interest. Um, and, and also, you know, for us, just looking at potential funding opportunities around access to um, those type of subject matter, um, you know, experts that we have at our disposal here at the university. So mm -hmm. it's, it's worked out well. Um, 
that with in like regards to a really to, good public service show. Yeah, so that that one um that's that's definitely been really really popular and then obviously with all this other stuff that's been going on um legally um and politically um we have a legal eagle show and the law school sponsors that <laughs> show it's a six hour i mean a six hour a 60 minute um public affairs show that airs on sundays and um it's fully um sponsored by the law school um which i'm an alum of and so i am very happy that they renew that contract with us every year nice. um, it's really really amazing that's a good title too well cool those those sound excellent yeah. Yeah. yeah you should try to convince those guys to put them on audio port yeah that uh well the covid show too we uh, well i suppose i don't know do you guys think that's more of a, a local I don't know if national people would be as interested in that or not. I don't know. No, I'll I'll go through it. It. Yeah, I'm not sure, um, you know, with COVID conversation, COVID conversations, I mean, surely it's probably applicable to communities um, everywhere, but uh, it is definitely more focused on um, our listening um, area here. Yeah. Um, in the in in Durham and the surrounding areas here, but you know our legal show now that is definitely um, that's national. Um, it yeah. could definitely be um, a national show and um, another show that we have the measure of everyday life. Um, you want to talk about um, anything about social science? Um, mm. We have a researcher, um, a research scientist that produces that show, or he's the host of that show. And that's very national as well. They, he actually works for a global company here, um, research company in the Triangle, and um, they sponsored that show um, for for him as well. So nice. that's a that could definitely be national. So maybe that's something I should look into. Yeah, well, we, we'd be totally open to it if you ever need any um, assistance on how to get that done. You know, we'd be happy to we'll do partner something. with you on that. Yeah. Um, you guys have a lot of nice, resourceful people. Um, cool. Thank you for sharing. No worries. <laughs> um, Davine, what, what, uh, what are you guys doing these days that you really like? So Lakeisha, I, I have carried a uh, measure of everyday life before, and I will vouch that that's a very good show. Mm. I'm not sure that we've got it on the schedule right now, but it's really, really good. And I think he delivered it in a way that I think it was an RSS feed or something. So it's not that difficult to get uh, a hold of to uh, air yourself. And it's evergreen, I think. I'm pretty sure it's evergreen. What's it called again? Measure? Measure of everyday life. Measure of everyday life. It's very well done. So Joseph, I want to thank you for mentioning what you did. I'm in the process right now of developing a uh, series of questions for our local politics uh, to send out to them prior to having them on. But we also do a graph that's on our website that uh, updates how much they've acquired in campaign donations, mm. interviews that we've done with them, it links to that. Uh, yes and no answers to important things like abortion and gay, uh, uh, LGBTQ, uh, whatever rights, all of, uh, you know, really common things that are that are out there in the ether, so to speak. Our political stuff is uh, a draw. North Carolina has a really unique situation with politics and we have a real uh, firebrand kind of guy that was just elected uh, January of 21 and three days after he elected, he shows up on the stage at the insurrection and really helps fire up the uh, flames of the audience. Oh, well, wow. North Carolina, well, there's a, there's a section in uh, the 14th Amendment that if you participated in uh, 
it, it's an old, um, it goes back to the Civil War. This came about after the Civil War. If, so if they wrote it into the Constitution that if you were gung-ho at the Civil War, then you can't serve in office for the United States. So hmm. this, is, this is a really big deal here. And I was able to uh, interview one of the attorneys who helped develop the language for the um, for this legal action, and and that particular interview I can tell uh, because it's on our website. So so not only do I play it on the air, then I put uh, the important things that we do as far as political. Uh, stuff on our website and on the website I can look at the stats and see uh, what the what the ISP number is of somebody coming to look at our site and then where they go on our site and we're getting we're so I had that interview about a month ago we're still getting people coming to the site and going to that page with that interview hmm. because it's it if um, if this uh, objection to this person running for office prevails and the low and the state um, voter state of North Carolina uh, Department of if if the bigwigs at the state level disqualify him, this can apply to also all of the other people who were involved in that insurrection around the country. Wow. No, so, so um, I was it's friendly. Here. It's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I read about that the other day, Debbie. But this is very, uh, you know, exciting. I don't know. What's yeah, well, well um, the interesting thing about it is they can do discovery here, but, if, but even if they can't do discovery, there, uh, Judge Orr, this is the interview that I had, Judge Orr says that there is enough obvious uh, on, K on, on uh, film proof that this guy helped instigate this insurrection, uh -huh. that he, he right. can be qualified, wow. disqual nice disqualified. Yeah. yeah, right, right. So, so it's, mm. we're exciting <laughs> political yeah. times here in, in North Carolina, like, for yeah, sure. Zero mm. for the, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so there are, so the political stuff that we do, uh, we're trying to up our game considerably so that we become known locally as the community station that pays close attention to politics. Um, and so that's one of the, the big pushes that I have for this year. The other is um, some, a couple of the uh, shows that I get off of audio port. I love exploration because it's a great uh, timely um, talk about what's happening in the tech world. Um, I'm, I know the, uh, the, web, the, the web spacecraft thing that is out there, it's going to be able to look into black holes and see what's really happening in there. I remember there was a show about that just a couple of weeks ago, and it's very informative. And so he does a very good job. Mm, there's, a, uh, they, there's a there's um, a show who, called who, who, The First who, I'm Rock sorry. Who does exploration? It's Michio Kaku, oh. M-I-C-H-I-O-K-A-K-U. Mm -hmm. And that's on audio port. OK. Um, and it's kind of like for more brainy listening. <laughs> so uh, we have uh, a great show that happens uh, Saturday afternoon called the first rock and roll radio show or the first rock and roll record. So he's he's got an extensive library of hundreds of thousands of songs and, and he's a very uh, irreverent kind of DJ and uh, he talks about the music before rock and roll happened and covers a lot of music from the late 40s to the mid 60s and and i'm not sure that he loads it to he doesn't load it to audio port but it sends sends it to us on an rss feed so if you're interested in it i can connect you and i know he'd love to share it on any of your stations too it, it makes a great saturday afternoon when you're running around shopping 
to have that on the air. So it makes a wonderful Saturday afternoon music listening time. Does he um, kind of try to have different arguments about like what the first rock and roll record is or, or what? Ha okay. Yeah, he does. Really yeah, he argues with himself about that <laughs> because <laughs> he's got a really he's got a really good slant on the whole thing, and as I said, it's very irreverent. So. But it's good. It's really fun, yeah. Yeah, he's been in radio a long time, so he, it's good. Um, we have some talk shows that are really good, and I've tried to get them to upload to Audioport. Not many of them do, but one that does is a guy that does great conversations with people from all over the world, and it's called Twice Five Miles Radio. And that's available on Audioport, too. Twice Five Miles. So I'm curious, like Sharon said, some are interested, some are not to, you know, and that's fine. Um, but I was wondering if it, if, if people, if it's because they're in, you think they might be intimidated of how it works or they're just not interested. I think it's partly intimidation uh, and we've done video to show you exactly how to do it. Uh, but uh, we've got a great rock and roll show that plays on Friday night. And uh, he contacted me through a station in Roanoke, a, a station in Roanoke that's a low power station, referred him to us. And he does a fabulous show on rock and roll. And I've talked to him and told him your show is national level. You should put it on audio port. And he just like, I just wanted, he's in, he's in Phoenix. He wants to do this show for Asheville. Oh, really? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I just want, Davine, I just love Asheville. I want to keep doing this show for Asheville. Asheville, I love you. He's signed off. Asheville, I love you. That's so awesome. Asheville is his but, but it's a great show. And, you know, we all know if you have a good show, you want to hold on to those people and make them happy. So, you know, I'm yeah. not gonna push him anymore. Right. Yeah. He, he knows what he, that I he think knows what he wants. Yeah, he knows I think he's world class and he could be anywhere, but he's just huh. I'm not pushing it anymore. I don't want to make him uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> he's too good. Well that's part of the magic too of community radio too, right? Some things you can only find where you are and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's funny though. Did he used to live in Asheville or, or how does he? I don't know he... what the draw is. All I know is that people from Roanoke referred him because their station was not open to uh, the programming. It wasn't free or open enough. And they referred him to us, which thank you Roanoke for doing that. And uh, mm -hmm. we're very happy to play him. And so I play that show three times a week because it's so good. Wow, that's awesome. Oh, good for him. Yeah, he knows all the history of stuff. Yeah, that's and then he goes fun. back in. And when I was a teenager, you know, in 1972, <laughs> this is the kind of song that you know I have. Is in my girlfriend. We were petting in the car. <laughs> so it gives you it's images good. to go along with it. <laughs> yeah, he does. He gives you the images. And and why? You know, he goes into the why. It's so good. So I've encouraged him to go on to his little historical things, and he does some really great rants. So that's that's good too. That's really cool. Yeah, Stephanie, I wonder if, um, if like, I know we've done with the GRC, you all did a presentation and everything, but I wonder if just like a, a special workshop just for producers where you all go through everything you went through already on our, you know, GRC page. But maybe if there was something that was more just like aimed at producers, get your show on audio port, get a national audience or something like that at some point, you know, not that you're not already up to your ears and meetings and workshops and that kind of stuff. But that, I don't know. I just wonder if that might be a good thing. Cause well, I know my kids is. want it. Yeah. Just, I don't know. They're just not taking, but they just, they're busy. I don't know. You know, maybe um, if, you know, like, watching an hour long videos, people are like, oh, okay. But if you were, you know, somewhere where you could engage and ask questions in real time, maybe that would put it in a different framework for producers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. I'll talk to Ursula about that. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff already on Audioport, but 
There's so I just much, know there's yeah. so many, you know, you go to another <laughs> town and you listen to the radio. Man, that's awesome. All the yeah. Great radio. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, if people don't want to, that's fine. You know, that's exactly, you should do what you want. But if, you know, people are not doing it because they're like, oh, I don't know how that works. Like, yeah. that would be sad. Like, I know. we should make it easy. <laughs> I think a lot of people are still in analog think so that, you know, in their mind, not go come in it's on the mic and it goes out on the airwaves like, and, and really not quite made the connection that you can share that file anywhere now. Right. Yeah. So maybe it's just how we offer it or invite people. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many of our DJs put their shows up on Mixcloud, and it's just as easy to put your show in audio port as it is. Mm -hmm. in so, yeah, and then and you the get a chances, much wider audience. You know? Yeah, and the chances of it being heard are much greater than on Mixcloud because there you just get into the whole bunch of the millions and millions of, of bullhorns that are out there on Mixcloud. Whereas if you upload it to a radio station, it'll go out to that audience at least. Right. Right. Yeah, that's a good idea. Another show I've loved recently, and it's getting late. I am going to have to run here in a minute. So maybe we can regroup on the uh, great audio for shows. Maybe when we have more folks here. Yeah, we can come back to this one, too. We could do it. At, like, I think that's a great months. topic. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, enjoying it, too. I'm glad you guys are. Because I love the... Um, Ursula recommended it at one of our meetings was the um, Bantu Knots radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got the Africa sound. So awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I always find it because I can never remember how to spell the name of the show, but I remember yeah. they spelled radio weird. They spell radio well, R-A-Y-D-I-O. -Y yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. when I'm trying to find it, I always just search R-A-Y-D-I-O and it comes up. <laughs> Bantu Knots radio. B A N B A. U B A N T U N A U T S N A U T S. That's a really great one. Just um, yeah, that's dance a unique ball, sound. African, like mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's just different music than I've heard. It's a husband and wife team. Does it? She's actually from Africa, and they're based in Little Rock. Mm -hmm. and so he plays all by the music. He's like kind of the music mixer and then she comes in with a lot of history and information about the musicians and I really like that one yeah um, I like that one too when I heard it that one's been a hit let's see we also like almost all the merging art productions mm. uh, programs so she does it's uh Tony B and I guess she goes by Madam B is her DJ name um she's up in Pennsylvania somewhere and Stephanie I met her through Sprouts and she was doing a Sprouts episode on community and college radio oh she uh, was. was oh yeah cool. it's been a while I mean that's been a couple years ago okay now. yeah that doesn't sound familiar to me so that must be just yeah got, a while yeah. ago but that's how I that's how I met her and then I started listening to her shows and they're really good she does th two every week and then a third one every other week oh. and so she's got um let me make sure I spell it right okay. Donna Del Mundo oh my I know, is that, Bonnie? that's probably just, um, Donnie, D-O-N-A. D-O-N-E, D-O-N-N-I-E. D-O-N-N-E. Oh, okay. Let's see. Someone probably speaks this language. Donnie Del Mondo. D -E, so D-O-N-N-E space Del space Mondo, M-O-N-D-O. Cool. Donnie Del Mondo. And that's uh, global, the subtitle is Global Music by Women. Okay. And it's really nice, like a lot of kind of, I want to say like kind of transcendental kind of ambient mm. music. Oh, nice. I mean, you can really yeah. listen to it at any time and it's yeah. a very peaceful kind of mellow show. Mm. That one's really nice. Then she does, um, let's see, tra uh, Trans World Airwaves, which mm. is very similar, except it's not limited to just the women. Um, and then I Good driving I'm music. I'm spac spacing on what the other one is. Let's see if I can go to more. While you're thinking, I'll add. Um, I I really like a Civic Cipher. Have you guys heard of that one yet? Um, 
these two guys, they have a lot of experience. They're in Phoenix uh, with radio, and they, um, they're really working on building their national show, too. So they'll... Um, they, anyway, they do a, a, like an hour show a week about the black experience in America. And, you know, it was fueled by after George Floyd. And I just think they do such a great job of doing kind of a long form deep dive into, you know, whatever uh, events happen, you know, they, and they, there's really good friends and you can feel their chemistry and, and they, they, you know, they bring humor to tough subjects and, and they also bring like real vulnerable feelings about it too. And they, they really work hard to, they just want a really good discussion, you know, like a really balanced, um, and I'm, I'm working with them to do a Sprouts show, so I'm hoping I'll get one on CRT soon for Sprouts, but yeah, I, I'm, I hope they can keep, keep it going because I like their show. That just makes me think of, um, just in terms of, you know, really dealing with race issues in America, but the Southern, Southern Poverty Law Center has a show, Sounds Like Hate. And that's a really uh, quality interesting. radio program as well. Yeah, it's on audio port. Is it? Really? Yeah. Yeah. You don't <laughs> even know. It's really, it, it's very impressive. Huh. Very well done. Very well produced. Um, that's awesome. New show. And like the one I just recently listened to was dealing with voter rights in Georgia and all the voter suppression there. It's, you know, really top-notch interviews. And interesting. Wow. Cool. I'll check that yeah, one out too. Good. I'll pick that one up. And there's, um, this is great. That's speaking nice. of the trance, kind of like, I, I like when I, like if a DJ doesn't show up or something and I need to fill the airwaves really quickly, a lot of times I'll go for um, transformational listening. And it's Ooh. again, kind of like mellow, like trance, like, but from all over the yeah. world, music from all over the world. Um, so we have a lot of Indian, like raga music and stuff like oh. that, or um, the gamelan music from Bali and stuff like that. It's really neat. And that's called, he spells it T-R-A-N-C, trance formation. So I was just Oh, okay. Trance. T-R-A-N-C-E? Um, uh-huh, I think so. Me... Okay, that's a good title too. Yeah, let me make sure. Which should I spell this? Um, I should, I might like that one. Yeah, that's a good one. I really like, and it's uh, he's very little talking in that one, which I also appreciate sometimes. Yeah. Um, I always he like just the... Uses the show and then he lets it roll. <laughs> the um, uh, lo fi beats they have on YouTube. I, I like to have that while I'm working. I'm wondering if that trance might be another good one. Okay, I just found it on Audioport. He spells it T R A N C E, uh -huh. and then there's a a dash. Oh, okay. Formational. Okay. Listening. Cool. And that one's, yeah. And then I also like, since I'm just rattling off names, um, Afrosonic Taxi is really great. Also, I don't know if you've heard of that one. That. I don't think I've listened to that yet. Yeah, that's a really good one out yeah, of. Yeah, um, I saw that somewhere. Yeah, it's out of an LPFM in Little, uh, not in Little Rock, Fayetteville, Arkansas. Okay. Um, they always come. Joe Newman, if you guys know him, they always come to the GRC. Um, but that's a great show. Um, and he'll he'll either pick a theme or an area or something like that, and then just really explore it through African music, and that's really nice to me. Cool, cool. Usually very uplifting, which is nice. Very positive. That is vibe. nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's that? <laughs> you know, I'll use a little bit of that positivity right now. <laughs> well, hard. I see we're coming at 4.30 and uh, Sharon has to go, so we'll, that's probably a good place to cut it out for everybody today. Yeah. 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 Uh, it was wonderful talking with you all. Thank you. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, great to see you all. Good yeah. seeing you, yes, yeah. And nice nice the, to meet you, Lakeisha. Yeah, nice to meet Joining you, us. Lakeisha. Glad you could join us today. Yeah, a lot going on over there. Yeah, really. <laughs> and, Joseph, I um, hope you're okay. enjoying your, your... Are you officially retired yet, Joseph? No, no, I'm semi. Semi. Okay. I, 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 I do 30 hours a week. Okay. <laughs> and I take six... Six of those hours are sick leave. Oh. 
So 24 hours a week. Okay. All right. Hours a week. <laughs> well, stay healthy, even though you're enjoying the sick leave. Um, yeah. <laughs> really good to see everybody. Good Have journey. a good rest of your week, guys. Yep. All, right. All right. You too. See you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.